Sometimes answers come from unlikely sources. In this case, the unlikely source was a woman named Pam Reynolds. A stunning array of scientific instruments and measurements were in place at the very moment of Pam Reynolds' death. The results were astonishing. At age 35, Pam was diagnosed with a life-threatening brain aneurysm. Her only hope was a very unusual operation. In order to fix the problem and to save her life, doctors would have to drain the blood out of Pam Reynolds' head. What's more, her body temperature would be lowered to 60 degrees, her heartbeat and breathing would stop completely, and her brain waves would be flattened. Doctors who perform this intense procedure have nicknamed it standstill because for all intents and purposes, Pam Reynolds would be dead. But what happened was so thoroughly unique and unexpected, Dr. Michael Sabum, a cardiologist and the author of Light and Death, made an extensive evaluation of the Pam Reynolds experience. The process of death, scientifically, now is known to be a process and not a point in time. It starts with normal waking reality and ends up in irreversible death. During this process, the body dies at different rates. The, the problem we have as scientists and physicians is to determine when the brain is actually dead, i.e. when the person is actually dead. In the case of Pam Reynolds, one of the surgeon's main concerns was seizure activity, which could prove deadly during such a delicate procedure. To guard against this and other complications, Pam's brain and body were extensively instrumented and monitored which makes what happened next even more intriguing. Pam told the doctor she left her body and became a spectator to what they were doing to her body. Later, she was able to describe people, procedures, and even medical instruments she could not possibly have seen. Pam Reynolds had a very deep near-death experience at the time that she had documented no brainwave activity, no brainstem activity, and actually the blood had been physically drained from her head at the time. So this eliminates the possibility that this was a seizure phenomenon because during her experience, she had no seizure activity on the EEG. In addition, she had plugs in both of her ears and so she could not have physically heard what was being discussed in the operating room during the surgical procedure, uh, and she could recall uh, the accurate uh, discussions that were going on between the surgeons at the time that she was having her experience. Remember, every bodily reflex was being monitored. She was in a profoundly inactive state. But Pam Reynolds somehow was able to describe a particular surgical tool in amazing detail. A tool which she would later say looked like an electric toothbrush with a dent in it. She even noticed that the tool had interchangeable blades and that these were kept in something that she said looked like a socket wrench case. How could Pam Reynolds have described with such amazing accuracy the details of what took place in the operating room when she was, according to all monitoring devices, dead? Dr. J.P. Moreland, professor of philosophy at Bible University, finds this kind of experience compelling. The most provocative evidence for heaven from near-death experiences seems to me to be cases where people come back from near-death experiences and they have information there's no way they could have had if they had just had a physical experience while on an operating table. For example, some people come back and they're able to recount conversations that their relatives have had five blocks away from the hospital. In other occasions, people have actually had experiences of objects on the hospital roof or somewhere else where when people go to investigate whether those experiences were real, they see the objects just as the people saw them. In other occasions, people have met dead relatives that died about the same time the person died in the near-death experience. And they came back and reported the death of a relative that no one there in the operating room knew about. Now this provides pretty strong evidence that something more is going on than just a lack of oxygen to the brain.